Hello guys, here is part 5 of the Blunder character creation workflow series in which I will add an idle animation to the ghost. But before we start, let me show you a faster way to select the inner faces than using the lasso or circle selection tool that I used in the previous video. I forgot that we already unwrapped the model and that we just could select the UV islands of the models inside. So let's open up the UV image editor and switch to edit mode with face selection. Then press this little guy here below the UV image editor to keep UV and edit mode selection in sync. Then hover over the UV islands that you want to select and press the L key. And with the shift key pressed, do this for these two UV islands as well and we are done. It's that simple. Okay, next step. After that, I wanted to add a root bone to the model to be able to move around the whole model with a single bone. So switch to edit mode and add a new bone, rotate it 90 degrees and scale it up. We would need this, for example, when I will add a walk or fly animation. Then I select again the model in object mode, after that the armature and rig again with automatic weights. And at this point we have to use weight painting to let the root bone translate the whole model. Because as you can see the root bone's weight just affects the lower part of the mesh. But that's easy to fix. Select the model, switch to weight painting and choose the add brush with full strength. After that, deselect limit selection to visible to paint over the inside and outside of the model. And then paint the whole model red. Okay, and when you select the root bone now you can move around the whole mesh after pressing the G key. Great. So let's come back to object mode and finally we are ready to add a first animation, an idle animation for the ghost. So open up a new window with the dope sheet. Okay, here it is and then switch to the action editor and press new to add a new action. Before you do this, be sure to have your armature selected. I will call this new action idle. For the keying set I use lock rod scale and enable automatic keyframe insertion so that keyframes are added when changing the location, rotation or the scale for the character's bones. Then I press the I key to add keyframes for all the bones on the first frame. After that I move to frame number let's say 30 and scale up a bone in the center. What I want to accomplish here is to make the character look like that he's breathing. Then I move to frame number 60 and remove the scale of the bone by pressing the Alt S key. Great, now we added the first simple cyclic keyframe animation for the ghost and it's time to improve it by rotating other bones of the armature. Therefore I choose different frames and add random, small rotations and every time I do this, new keyframes are added automatically. Once I'm happy with my idle animation, I select the keyframes of the first frame 
by holding the Alt key and a right click with the mouse and then I press Shift D to duplicate them and move them to frame number 60, the end frame. And the result is a cyclic idle animation. But it's a little bit too fast, so I select all the keyframes by pressing the A key, then I press S and scale this animation up. And by doing this, I'm extending the length of this animation. Then I press G to move it to the right to let it start by frame number 0 again. And that's it. Now you can add here and there if you like some slight rotations to complete the idle animation. In the next and last part, I will show you how to export the model as FBX with animations to my Unity game. Guys, I hope you liked this series and my channel and if you do, please don't forget to like and subscribe to not miss the next part. And please consider being my Patreon to support my tutorials, this would really help. Thanks for watching, thanks for your support and see you soon.